Hey guys, Jake and James here with another filmmaking tutorial. Today we're going to have a really quick look at what chroma subsampling is. And you may recognize these numbers like 444, 422, 420. We're going to break down what these numbers actually mean. Okay, so we're going to start off just to say picturing it as a 4x2 grid, as this is how it is usually judged. So you've got your numbers 444, which are represented by A, B, and C for our example right now. So A is how many pixels we are talking about. For example, the number of pixels across on the top row. B is the number of pixels with their own chroma sample or color information. C is the number of pixels in the second row with their own chroma sample. As you can see, 444 means that every single pixel in our diagram has its own chroma sample. Whereas if you went down to a 422, would actually mean that although there's four pixels across, only every other pixel would have its own information. So each one would be paired up and the color would just be, well, shared. Yes, shared. <laughs> yep, so then this becomes the same for the second row in 422. However, if you go to 420, all this means is that the second row is just copying exactly what happens on the first row above it. Yeah, so it sounds complicated. When you break it down like that, it's actually quite simple. Yep, so basically, to round it off, 444 is going to give you the best information. So when you come to anything like chroma keying, it's obviously going to give you a much cleaner key after you've put the effect on but it does give you higher data rates, which means you have much larger files. 422, again, is still considered a very high image quality, but you're gonna have, again, slightly smaller file sizes. It is actually broadcast quality and it's probably a lot more commonly used than 444. And then 420 is just kind of, if you wanna keep your file sizes down, if your end image, if it's only going up on something like YouTube, it's not actually gonna matter. If you're looking to broadcast, you are gonna have to try and go in one of the higher ones, but realistically, on a low quality image, you're not even gonna notice. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned something from this tutorial. As I said, it does seem quite complicated at first, but when broken down, it is actually quite simple. And hopefully you now understand. Yep, so please like the video and subscribe to the channel because that will really help us out a bunch. And we hope to see you again in our next video. Yep, see you guys Saturday, goodbye.